Hey everyone, Dan Saavedra here from MergerData.com and today I'm going to be going over the new Tableau release 2023.2. It's been out for a little while now at the time of the release of this video and it's taken me a little bit to kind of wrap my head around some of the features and understand exactly what the implications are of them. So if you've seen my previous videos, sometimes I separate them out into what's good for developers, what's good for end users, and what's good for analytics developers who are building the dashboards. And for this one, we'll mostly be focusing on both Tableau developers and end users and how these features are impacting those two groups. We're going to split it out into cloud and desktop. A lot of the features are overlapping, but We'll still split them out because there are a few that are different. So let's dive in. Okay, so we're going to dive into the Tableau desktop new features first. And the first two are some pretty straightforward features, so I'll do those. But they have a really big impact on how people use Tableau in general. And these two new features are both connectors and connectors really open up a whole new world of being able to analyze data efficiently and, and directly without having to involve a data engineering team dump data into a data warehouse somewhere or something similar to that and so the first big connector is salesforce data cloud people pay a lot of money for salesforce in general and the various products that they have obviously tableau is owned by salesforce too and Having more of the Salesforce data sources as native connectors brings a lot more value to the platform. And so this is the first connector that I think has a really big impact. And then the second one, which would be the second top new feature in this version release, would be the Amazon S3 connector. And I've used this several times already. It was a, kind of a pain before to connect to S3 data, especially if you didn't want to use a paid connector. And now this is native. So it says it's still in beta here, but I've used it several times. Seems to work out really great. It makes it a lot more direct in order to analyze files that are being stored in S3. So those are the top two new features in desktop. Now the third new feature is great for both developers and end users alike because it opens up the geospatial capabilities of Tableau. And while Tableau is still not a powerhouse when it comes to geospatial analysis, having more and more features for this just increases the use cases so that you don't have to use a separate tool. With that being said, there are times to use other tools for geospatial analysis, especially when you're talking about not aggregating data and you're wanting to quickly load you know, millions of points on a map or something like that. Tableau, as of right now, won't be able to handle that as well as other platforms that are specifically built for geospatial analysis. So that's just a note going forward, but let's jump into the important new geospatial functions. So there are three of them. There is outline, shape type, and length. Length was a little bit confusing to me at first, so I made a separate video on it while I was learning exactly what it was about. I'll make sure to check that out. It's in the Tableau playlist on this channel. But let's dive into these other functions and I'll also use a dashboard that was built by Andy Kribel, if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, in order to discuss the length function a little bit. So first off, I have a spatial data set from the city of Orlando, which is where my company is based and where I live. And they had a really nice data set on the waterways in the area. And so they have the geometry already defined. And basically what I did was just create a, two really simple calculated fields, one being outline here and then the other being shape type. So we'll do outline first. And there have been some other Tableau experts who have gone into some of the use cases around these geospatial functions. So I would definitely recommend to just search on YouTube. There's some great tutorials out there. But first off, we have outline here. You can see it's super easy to create the outline. You just need a, a geometric field type or a spatial field type in order to make the function work. And you can see that if you have the helper window open here in Tableau, it says it returns polygons converted into line strings so that they can be styled individually. So instead of having just a lake as a an area in the spatial data set, we can 
put an outline on it, and then it'll do the outline around the outside of the lake instead. And so this opens up a lot of new options in terms of analysis. And I did that here. So you can see that I just dropped the outline here onto the canvas. And I'll hide this other geometry. So you can see now when I hover over the lake in the middle, it doesn't really show, it doesn't bring up a tooltip. It doesn't show anything because we just have the outline. But then if I hover over the outline, you can see that it brings up the edges of the lake there. And I use the square area of the lake in order to drive the colors. Let me see, this is, I'm gonna filter out the null here so that we can see more purely. So you can see that we have the outline colored by the area. And obviously this isn't like a great visualization, but this was just to show what the function does. So you can see that the biggest lake is the darkest color. And so there's a lot of options here in terms of some cross analysis you can do on dashboards by layering, our, layering on different marks on, onto the map and then using the outline function uh, in order to indicate certain things. So that's the outline function, really straightforward. The next one is shape type, which is also very straightforward. And so I created the shape type calculation here by dropping on or dropping the geometry spatial data into the shape type function. And so you see it just returns a string describing the spatial object contents. And so this becomes really useful when you have a data set that you want to categorize by the shape type. And so for something like this, a creek versus a lake would be a really useful split. And so if the spatial data already has different geometric or different data types then or different shape types, then you'll be able to distinguish that in the data set. And so you can see the shape type here is line string for the creeks and then for the lakes, it's a polygon. And so this opens up a lot of opportunities as well. It's a really straightforward function to use. Would recommend exploring it if you have a spatial data sets in general. And last but not least, we're gonna go into the line, I'm sorry, into the length function. And like I said, I'm using Andy Kreibel's Tableau Public dashboard here. I added some color to it just so that we can see the, the roads a little bit differently. And if you looked at my, my length video, I go into a little bit of how the length function works and why it's different than the distance function. And to sum it up, the distance function is simply the distance between two points, which means that you just have an endpoint and a beginning point or vice versa. And it tells you the distance between those two points without considering a path in between. And the length function considers that path. So in my other video, I talk about how with certain spatial data sets, lines are actually a series of a bunch of points so that you can precisely map out exactly exactly the path a road takes for example and so the length function considers that path and tells you the length between the starting point and the ending point along the points on that line and so in andy's example here if we hover over i-94 you can see it tells the length which is 3233 miles which is different than the start to end of I-94 if we were not to consider the path in between. And so if I hover over each of these lines here, you can see that Tableau tells me the length and I'll open up the, the function just so you can see a little more detail, but really simple function. You're just taking the line string spatial data and then specifying the, the units. So if we wanted to do feet Instead, we could do that. And then Tableau will tell us that it's, whoops, I have the label static here. But if I change that to feet, that would be accurate. So you can see it's over 17 million feet on I-94. So that's pretty much the geospatial analysis enhancements. There are three new functions that open up a little bit more in terms of what you can do from a, a geographic analysis standpoint in Tableau here. Okay, now the fourth 
top new feature in Tableau Desktop 2023.2 is the ability to customize line patterns. And so I just made a random chart here in the Superstore workbook with the sum of profit and the count of returns on a dual axis line graph. And so if we drop the measure names here on the color for the lines, we'll have the different marks configurations that we can choose here. And this is where we can click on path for one of these options and then click on the dotted line so that we can see the difference between the two lines, let's say that we want to keep them the same color, but distinguish between a current year and a past year of metrics or something sort of something like that. Then now we can do that really easily with just a few clicks of the button instead of crazy workarounds that you're used to having to do. So that's the fourth top new feature. It makes it a lot easier for developers and obviously benefits end users because it's more likely that this will get built in the proper way. So that's the fourth top new feature. The fifth top new feature is image role enhancements. And for this one, I'm just going to pull back up the handy new features page that Tableau provides. And so if I scroll down here, we'll click on image role enhancements. And so you see that the little helper text says add web images dynamically. And so basically what they did was they include or they improve the file type support. So it supports a lot of new uh, file types when you're fetching them dynamically. And then you're also able to increase the number of images per column and the size of those images. So they're slowly removing the limitations that existed with this image role functionality, which is great news keeps opening up a lot more possibilities in terms of what you can be using Tableau dashboards for. So this is feature number five for the Tableau desktop 2023.2 release. And the sixth final new feature that I thought was worth going over was the improvements to the accelerator the mapping functionality. And so before it was a first iteration of the data mapping feature for accelerators. They got all the basic functionality in there and now they're just building onto that. And it's really just improvements on the overall flow of using this functionality and making it a little bit quicker and a little bit easier and less frustrating for the developer. And you can see that Tableau just lists out these additional capabilities here. So I won't go through and show each one of them because they're pretty straightforward from the description. But a big issue before was if you were switching data sources midway, a lot of the configuration would have to be redone. Now, you, now you're going to be able to switch data sources midway to another data source and retain the configurations that you made. On top of that, you have sample values that are provided and displayed in the tooltip for the fields as well as support for existing connected data sources. So those are two really big things as well. It just makes using this functionality a lot easier. Easier. So that was the sixth top new feature for Tableau Desktop 2023.2. So some other new features that I didn't go into, but I would recommend you looking into on the new features page is the GA4 connector, the Amazon Athena connector, and then also unified tooltip. The two connectors, I just felt like they weren't as big of an impact to dive into them. Obviously, they're quick to talk about. But yeah, you can explore those if you use them. And then Unified Tooltips, just read on the Tableau New Features page if you want more information around that. Okay, moving to Tableau Cloud Last. I only have two features that I wanted to highlight that are different from the Tableau desktop improvements that you see, obviously, as we talk about. On a lot of these videos, Tableau seems to be converging on the capabilities between desktop and development in cloud. So you'll see a lot of the same new features on both cloud and desktop. Now these are specific just to Tableau cloud and both of them have to do with things that are happening specifically inside of the portal when you're logged in, not developing actual dashboards. Now the first one is view acceleration recommendation enhancement. So if you remember in previous videos we talked about View acceleration has an awesome new feature that helps with the performance of your dashboards and how they load. This is an extension of that. So before it was the owner and the admin of the site who would be able to accelerate views. Now, if 
users recognize that things are taking a long time to load and Tableau has the data necessary, it can allow users to recommend that the view be accelerated. And so it's really as easy as just clicking that accelerate button up here. And for this example, this view can't be accelerated, but basically there'd be a big recommend button here for the end user to say, hey, let's accelerate this view. And if we go into the details of view acceleration in general, Tableau breaks it down into two separate things that impact the load time of a dashboard. One is querying, actually getting the data from the data source. Two is rendering, so loading all the visualizations on the page, drawing maps, that type of stuff, as they describe here. And basically what view acceleration is doing is it's taking care of that first part, the querying, and it's basically preloading data in the background and making that more streamlined so when people come to the dashboard again, if they're loading the same data set as another user, as a bunch of other users, then they'll already have that data preloaded so that the load time is less. That sounded a little bit circular. I'll let you guys interpret that though and see if that makes sense. If not, ask questions below in the comments, I'd be happy to answer. The second top new feature for Tableau Cloud 2023.2 is the admin insights enhancements. So as an admin, it's great to be able to see what's going on in your instance without having to go and do a separate project of building dashboards to look into that data specifically. And so Tableau added in new admin insights. So you have your job performance, you have your TS users data source now tracks your organization's Tableau desktop usage. And then the, there's a brand new subscriptions data source that lets you see which users have subscriptions and allows you to create a better picture of subscription health. So those are really big things because it gives you more flexibility to look into how people are using Tableau and how you can increase usage, what they've been engaging with most, some feature sets that they may or may not be using. And so greater insights for admins is, in my opinion, always a really big step from Tableau and that's why it is on this review. So if you guys haven't checked out the new feature releases for this version, I definitely encourage you to do so. As you can see, there's a lot that I didn't go into here. I believe Tableau Tim goes over almost all of these, if not all of them. So definitely recommend checking out his channel there. I know I've used it a bunch of times for learning new features when he dives into a feature in depth. So that's, that's been really helpful and we definitely recommend you checking it out. I'm Dan Saavedra from MergerData.com. Merger Appreciate you guys stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.